Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the BMW Underbed Gooseneck Kit on a 2022 Ford F-350. Now this kit installs underneath your bed allowing you to hook up to your gooseneck and the ball is going to be nice and easy to remove and whenever you need to actually use this you're just going to drop it in place and then the handle on the side is going to allow you to lock that in. But the great part is, is normally with some other goosenecks, you're having to find a spot to keep the ball. And normally it's gonna be having grease all over it. Um, and that's kind of normal to keep that nice and clean. But the problem is you gotta store it somewhere. So in order to get all of your bed access, you can see this is nice and flush, even with our safety chains here. It's as simple as dropping this in upside down. Either way, you can see there's holes on both sides. And that way, this is gonna be nice and flush, it's gonna lock in place and your ball's gonna be ready to use it whenever you need it. So whenever, whenever you are ready to hook up, super easy, there's a little handle here to pull this up. You'll simply just flip it over, drop this in place, lock it in and you're ready to go. Now the great part about having a gooseneck on your vehicle is gonna be the fact that your towing capacity is gonna be pretty solid. In fact, this one's rated at 30,000 pounds. So that's, I mean, a lot. You can tow a pretty heavy trailer with this and your tongue weight is gonna be 7,500 pounds. So overall, this kit's pretty heavy duty. You are gonna to wanna to check, obviously, with your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the truck's capable of. Compare it with that. You don't wanna overload uh, the vehicle even though the hitch can handle it. Now this is a two and five sixteenths ball and that's what's gonna come with the kit. And I think the best part about having this gooseneck kit is the fact that you're not always towing a trailer and you still wanna maintain having an entire bed. Well, when this is flipped over, you know you have this stored ready to go. So that way, uh, other goosenecks, you know, you store your ball in the truck or who knows where you store it and you have to go look for it. This will be right here waiting to go whenever you're ready. And also your safety chain loops spring loaded. So they're gonna snap in place, keeping it nice and flush. So even if you wanted to load up a sheet of plywood or drywall in the back of your bed, no problem. You're not really losing anything because this stays right at the bed corrugation. So everything's still nice and flush. Now you do wanna put marine grease on this when you're using it, and that's just gonna keep this protected from the elements and keep it from seizing up. But the great part about this is, you can see it's almost a square design where your other ones are circular, and so it's gonna to touch metal all the way through. Um, this one, yes, it has touching on four sides, but you also have these corner pockets here, and that's gonna allow you to have a little bit of space there. That way, at least it, the contact patch, metal to metal, is a little bit smaller than the entire surface. So it's gonna make it a little bit easier. It shouldn't seize up especially if you keep this coated up with some grease. Now, if you do plan on using a fifth wheel, something that's really nice with the BMW is you can pick up the companion kit and that's gonna drop into your gooseneck and allow you to still pull that fifth wheel trailer. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, that's obviously sold separately, but you still have that capability if you need to. So to engage the lock on your ball, pretty easy here on the side, you're gonna have this handle and it's even got a nice sticker here to let you know what to do. So pretty easy to, right now it's spring loaded, latched in place, but if I wanna pull that ball out, I'll just pull this out, pull this to the side and that's gonna keep it in a position where it's gonna keep it unlocked. Whenever we're ready to go, you can just push this in, let it go and it's locked in. Now this kit goes together really well. It has a series of side brackets now some trucks will come with the side ones already welded on it kind of depends on your vehicle so it's something you want to check uh, before installing but really it's going to come with it and if you don't need them then you just don't have to use the side plates but the rest of it is just a series of brackets that uses cross members to attach to allow this center section to be nice and sturdy and you can also see kind of the mechanism here of our handle as well as our ball so Overall, very clean system, all the hardware is included, and it's really not that hard as far as installation. You're gonna be under the truck, obviously. It's really nice to have a lift, obviously, but if you don't have one, you can still do this in your driveway or in your garage. I would set aside a nice long afternoon, maybe a full day. Uh, if you have an extra set of hands with you, it might help too, as some of this can be pretty heavy getting it in place. As far as cutting and drilling, the only things that you're really gonna be cutting and drilling are gonna be the holes to allow, obviously, that gooseneck to go up. So you're gonna need a four inch hole saw, and you're also gonna be drilling for where your safety loops go, which is pretty easy too, because once this is in place, it's gonna give you the template to be able to drill that up. So it's pretty straightforward there. Main thing is just take your time and just enjoy the process, and you'll be able to use your gooseneck in no time.
Beginning our installation, we're going to want to drop down our spare tire as this is going to be kind of a tight area working and lifting up heavy things. More space is better. So to give us a little bit more real estate, we're going to go ahead, lower down our spare tire. So now we're going to start by drilling out the hole in our bed and we're going to be using a four inch hole saw. Now there is a factory dimple and on the newer models, we are going to be using this. Now, if you have a bed liner or a cover, sometimes it's hard to find that spot uh, as it kind of fills that up, but you can measure from the outside of the bed here and you're going to go back 45 and three quarters. Now, if you do have that bed liner, that can add a little thickness to the end. So you want to account for that, but it should be about dead center here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a pilot hole and uh, ours, we can see the dimple. If you need to, you can use a punch to kind of make sure that that's centered up and you can get your pilot hole started. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this out. Now we can go back with our hole saw here and I'm just going to use our pilot hole to make sure that this is nice and centered up. And then we'll go ahead and get this drilled out. Now I've learned that this can kind of catch on you a little bit. So using your ankles to kind of hold this in place, that way it doesn't twist your wrist is a good way to do this, but just take your time here and we'll get this cut out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get some of our aluminum shavings vacuumed up here. Now I'm also gonna go back with the file just to get some of these burrs knocked out. So just kind of run this around, make sure that it's nice and smooth. So now just where we've cut out, we wanna make sure that we kind of coat this. Uh, that way uh, aluminum is not gonna rust, but also you don't want any corrosion buildup. So just to protect it, I'm gonna put a little coat of clear enamel. Uh, you can use, if you have a bed liner or something along those lines, you can use black spray paint, whatever works best for the color of your vehicle and your application. But what I'm gonna do here, just to kind of keep the overspray from going everywhere is in the kit, you're gonna have this cardboard and it, it's just slightly larger than the hole we drilled out. So it works out really well uh, to kind of use as a template. And we'll just go ahead, coat this up. Now to also give us a little bit more room to work in here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove our heat shield. So you're gonna have a 13 millimeter nut here as well as two that are tucked back here. So go ahead and get those removed and we can set this aside. Now we're going to need to lower down our exhaust and that's again just going to give us a little bit more room when we get our center section in place just to be able to kind of move this around. And you'll see that this has an isolator that goes to a bracket so there's going to be a 10 millimeter, uh, two of them on this side as well as two on the outside of the frame so we'll go ahead and get these removed. So now we have this lowered down and it doesn't seem like much, but this is just going to be that little bit of extra room that we'll need to get our parts in place later. So now I've gone ahead and take, taken our brackets and just laid them out how they're going to sit underneath the truck. And we have threaded bushings here that need to go in place. And you'll see there's a flat spot and that's going to align with this little notch here. So we'll go ahead and just kind of get these in place. And what I'm going to do is just take a hammer and just tap this in to where it sits flush. Um, you'll see that kind of cinch up as we kind of tap it in. And once we have those all in place, uh, we'll just go ahead and finish up with the rest of the holes and our threaded bushings. Now you're going to want to check underneath your truck to see if there's side rails already kind of welded onto the frame. And you're going to notice that it's going to be stacked up with a thicker piece of metal. Now, if you don't have one like ours, you're going to be using the side plates here. And these are just going to sandwich around the frame. So you'll see pretty quickly that the driver's side has the handle sticker. So you'll know which one that is. And then this is going to be the longer side bracket for the driver's side. So we'll go ahead and we're going to line those holes. And the hardware we're going to be using are our long bolts. We're going to 
have a flat washer on the outside and it's going to go towards the middle there and then we're going to follow it up with a flat washer a lock washer and then our nut so we'll have this side as well as the passenger side and you'll see that uh, that one has the b&w sticker that's going to go on the outside of the frame and then the other frame rail for the side will bolt up to it all the same. We're gonna go ahead and get these tightened up to where they're flush with the frame as well. So we'll go ahead and get this kind of in place and run our hardware through. So when we're putting our side plates on, they're just gonna go on the outside of the chassis and we're gonna feed them in using the larger diameter bolts that are in the kit as well as these large flat washers. So this will go on uh, from the outside towards the end. And once we get this passed through, we'll have our inner side plate go in and we're gonna follow that up with a flat washer, a lock washer, and then our nut. So we'll go ahead, get these all in place, and then we can go ahead and get these tightened down to where they're flush with the frame. I'm just gonna hand tighten this one on, that way I can get my other one on as well. So now that we have our driver side in place, we'll go ahead and do the same process on the other side with our passenger side rails. So now I'm gonna go back and just tighten these all down and I'm gonna put my three quarter inch wrench on the outside on the head of the bolt and then tighten on the nut side with my three quarter inch socket on my impact. We'll just repeat for the other side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our handle and get this in place. It's gonna make it easier later on for some of our steps. So just kind of set this up here um, and it's gonna go a little bit past this inner fender well here to just make sure that it's staying in place. So now we're gonna grab our plates that we hammered in our threaded bushings and just how I had them laid out, they're gonna go up accordingly and we're gonna use our thread locker bolts here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get these hand threaded in for now and then we can come back and tighten these down. But the holes should align pretty, pretty perfect with our side plates that we just installed. So you'll have one there and then also one on the outside of the frame rail. So now we'll just go ahead and get these in place, uh, just the rest of them here. And again, I'm just gonna get these hand threaded in and then we'll go back and get these tightened up. Now they should slide in place pretty easily. Now if your bed has seen better days, it's got some heavy dents in it. You may have to kind of pry up on it just to kind of get some of that clearance, but should fit in place no problem. So we're gonna just get these hand tightened in enough to where they're holding into those threaded bushings. And the reason being is we're gonna need a little bit of adjustment to get our cross members in. So we don't wanna tighten this down because once we get our cross member in, it's gonna kind of tie it all together. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna get our front cross member on. And this is gonna go in between the two side brackets that we had. There's also gonna be this portion here. This is gonna become our plate that's gonna tighten through. So we're gonna be running our large bolts through this and then following it up with a split washer and then a nut. So you wanna make sure also, you'll see, there's a welded portion of the tube. This weld should be facing up. So just make sure that you have that in the proper orientation. So we'll go ahead and get this lifted in place. You may need to kind of feed this up over the exhaust so we can do this side first. And then I'm going to just rest this here while I get my bracket in place. And then we'll just go ahead and align these to where we can pass our bolt through. And then I'll Go ahead and get this one in as well. And once that's in place, I'm just gonna follow it up with our split washer and our nut. And we'll do the same for this one as well. Now on our driver's side, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna pass our bolt through the far hole, should be the large one. And then we're gonna be using our rectangular spacer block here. And then we'll finish that up with a split washer and our nut. 
Now for our rear cross member, it already has threads in it. Now with the powder coating finish, it adds to durability, but sometimes it can actually get in the threads and it's gonna make it really hard to hand thread these in. So before you get this up in place, it's gonna help a lot to pre-thread these through. It's just gonna kind of knock out some of that powder coating. And it's just, again, gonna make it easier for when we hand tighten it in. So you'll see the two outside ones here as well as the two outside ones on the other side are going to be a 15 16 so just go ahead and take your hardware and i'm just going to pass this through and then i'm just going to repeat that for all of them and again this is just going to help you later on now we'll also do these inside holes here and this is going to be a smaller one this is going to be a three quarter inch socket so just make sure you have the proper hardware and then just get those threads cleaned out So now we're gonna do our rear cross member and we're gonna have the two on the outside and two on the other side as well. Um, and we're gonna be using these larger diameter bolts with a split washer and then our large flat washer. So this is just gonna sandwich in between this bed channel and the brackets that we put up previous. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get one hand tight on each side or at least a few threads started in that way it's going to support itself we may need to kind of wiggle the bracket around to get this aligned but we should be able to get this started pretty easy again you may kind of have to move these brackets around to get it to properly align but once you get one on each side it should make it a lot easier for that next bolt so now we're gonna get ready to put our center section in and you should have it aligned where our handle is gonna be obviously on our driver's side and the longer section where our safety chain loops are going to be should be facing towards the tailgate of the truck. So what we're gonna do here is get this aligned between our two cross members and you're gonna to wanna to have some hardware available. So on this back side where we cleaned out those threads, this is just gonna pass in and hold this in place. So we have our bolt, a split washer and a flat washer. And then on our front cross member, we're gonna have a long bolt that's gonna pass through and then we're gonna finish it up with a uh, flat washer, our split washer and our nut. So I'm just gonna get one on each side. That way it's supported up. It's gonna make it a little bit easier getting this all in place. So this should just kind of slide in here. And you might need an extra set of hands here, but uh, again, once we get our hardware kind of threaded in, that's gonna help us out quite a bit. Make this a little bit easier. You can get your bolt pretty well started. Keep your threads behind the cross member. So that way when we raise this up, we should be able to just pass that bolt through and it's gonna hold this side up. So just kind of raise this. Align it. And then once that's passed through, that side's held up. We can go ahead and get our threaded portion on the other side. Just wherever you can get one started. That way it's gonna hold it up. We can get the rest of the hardware in. So now at this point, I have all my hardware in place and you've probably noticed that none of it we've tightened down. And that's because there's still a little bit of movement and that's to allow just everything to kind of come together. So before we tighten it down, we're gonna to wanna to make sure it's cinched up in the bed nice and well and that way it's centered up before tightening it. So we're gonna lower a truck down, hop in the bed and I'm gonna use a lifting device to kind of get this pulled up and that way we have it ready to go to tighten it down and it's gonna be perfectly in place. Now as far as a lifting device to kind of get this in place, the best method I've found using things that you probably have around the garage is gonna be jack stands and either a metal pipe or you can use even a jack handle um, and kind of run this across and then just using a ratchet strap. You can go ahead and hook that on the pin here that locks um, our ball in place. Now you can see this is a little offset and not to worry because we know that we've actually measured this out and got it in the right spot. So what we're gonna do is just tighten this up and this should bring this up exactly where we want it to be. Now you can see, I want this to shift a little bit towards the front so you can actually move your jack stands before you have too much tension and that's gonna align that a little bit better. So once you're pretty happy with where it's set up, you'll go ahead and just tighten this. And this is gonna pull it up exactly where we want it. And we can go ahead and just leave this in position as long as we're happy with it. And then we can go ahead and start getting our hardware tightened down. 
Now we have it secured up top and that's gonna hold that in place while we tighten. So we're gonna start, there is a method to tighten them down in a certain order. And the first thing we're gonna do is gonna be our bolts that go to our cross members. So we'll have three quarter inch ones that go into the threaded portion. The other ones you're gonna have to back it with a wrench um, as you tighten that down. But we're gonna go back with a torque wrench later. So really we're just trying to get this snug. We don't have to really go crazy on this. Um, but we'll go ahead, get all of our three quarter inches tightened, and then we'll come back with our 15 sixteenths and get those uh, outside ones tightened up as well. So now we're gonna tighten down our thread lock bolts and those are the black ones that go vertical. Now we're gonna do this in a cross pattern. So um, across from where our handle is on our passenger side, we're gonna do this one first. We're then gonna cross over to the rear driver side and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the passenger rear and then move our way up. And that's just gonna kind of cinch that up nice and evenly. So we'll get these tightened down. So now we're gonna do our outside um, thread lock bolts and I'm just gonna use the same pattern as we did with the inside ones. So now we'll go ahead and do our side plate bolts. So now we're gonna go back with our torque wrench and we're gonna to torque down in the exact same order that we tighten them down. Now, there are gonna be two different torque settings for the two different sizes of hardware. So just make sure that you adjust your torque wrench accordingly. And if you need a torque wrench, we have these available at e-trailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store. Um, but again, this is just gonna be an important step to make sure that it's all torqued properly and it's gonna stay safe for the life of the gooseneck. Now we'll just go through, get these all torqued down. Now some of the hardware is gonna get kind of tricky to get to, so you may be using some extensions or maybe even a swivel. Um, I don't think we'll have to use a crow's foot on any of these, but um, again, just try to make sure you get them all torqued down properly. So now you're gonna to wanna to take your lifting device off of your uh, gooseneck here, and we're gonna get our handle attached. So what we're gonna do here is push here on the spring-loaded part, and this is gonna lock in place by just pushing this forward. Now, in order for this to not snap back, you might wanna throw something in this area so it doesn't just snap while we're putting our hardware in. So just a small, um, either an Allen head, or I just have a small file here that I'm gonna put in there. And then we're gonna go ahead, grab our handle, and then we're gonna put our carriage bolts here in place. So just kind of align the handle with it. And you'll see these are gonna just drop in. And we'll go ahead and do the same with this. And then we're just gonna finish it up with our flange nut and get these tightened down. Now we'll go ahead and tighten those down with a 13. And we can go ahead and take our mechanism out that we had keeping that in place. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and actuate the handle a few times just to make sure that it's working properly. So now at this point, we need to make our pilot holes for our safety chain loops. And just from the underside, we're gonna use the holes here and I'm gonna drill until we reach uh, or at least until we poke through the bed. So we'll just make sure it's perpendicular and you're getting a pretty straight shot in the middle of the holes. And we'll just repeat this for the remaining three. With our pilot holes made, I'm gonna just use a step bit here to enlarge it. Now I'm gonna have my U-bolts handy. That way I can test fit to make sure that they're able to pass through. And also we're gonna need a larger bit to just clear that out just to make sure it goes through both channels of metal here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge these first. And 
And I'm gonna have to go just a little bit larger here. And we can also see underneath our second layer of metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my larger drill bit since this is large enough, clear that out. And then I can enlarge with my step bit just for the opening a little bit more. So now we'll go ahead and get our shavings vacuumed up. And uh, I'm gonna just give it a test fit here. It should be able to just drop in to kind of this point. We just need to make sure that once we put the springs on, it's gonna actuate. So you don't want it binding up. Um, but this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead, take a little bit of my uh, clear spray paint and just spray this. And then I'm gonna repeat drilling those holes on the other side. And we'll just go ahead, get our clear, uh, clear coat here on our exposed metal. And we should be able to just drop these in, make sure that they're able to again move. And then we're going to go underneath and get our springs on the bottom side. Now to get our springs in place, we're going to just kind of slide these here. Now, sometimes as we're tightening it, um, these can actually get coiled up in those threads. So kind of what I do just to kind of help it and make sure that it doesn't get caught is I just take a, a wrench here to hold this up in place. I'm just going to get this hand tightened and we'll go to tighten these down. We're just looking to make sure that this gets flush with the bottom here. So just tighten it up enough where it's going to be flush here. A little much there. So now we'll just go ahead and repeat for the other two. And that was a look and install of the B&W Underbed Gooseneck Kit on a 2022 Ford F-350.